Salutations, searching for a Noah here with something a little bit different. Uh, I always get some of these ideas when I'm inspired by somebody else. And uh, funnily enough, uh, I was inspired by, of all people, Yanners. Because she did a full read-through of Freddy Got Fingered for whatever reason. I don't know what spawned her to think of that idea. I guess she just was bored and decided to do something like that. I figured, hey, I could probably do something like that for one of my favorite movies. I always wanted to do... Um, at least one movie, and if I was going to pick one, I was going to pick the 90, 1993 classic Groundhog Day, considering it today is Groundhog Day. So, uh, I'll give you a link to, uh, well, you gotta, you gotta see the Yanners thing if you haven't seen that yet, because, uh, and don't worry if you can't get past, uh, ever so softly go, ding dong, ding dong. That killed me, like, the first two or three times I had to, like, stop and start laughing and then, like, start over again, because like, oh shit, where was I? Uh, I'll also give the uh, uh, Dave Scriptorama Groundhog Day. I'll give that link in the description below as well, the second link. Uh, so you can follow along if you want. Uh, it doesn't do numbers, but I do have the information for that because I saw the movie like a day or two ago. It had commercials. It was like BBC America, but I just ran through it and like what I could find. And it might not be like a uh, word for word perfect because some things were like taken out. I might have to like. Here or there, add a few things, and of course, it's just the words that characters say, and I'll explain as best I can. So, anyway, let's get started. Uh, with the, the title open, Groundhog Day, you see the clouds, everybody go in, and uh, we start with uh, Bill Murray's character, Phil Connors, uh, reporting on the weather for today. Somebody asked me today, Phil, if you could be anywhere, where would you like to be? And I said to him, probably right here. Elko, Nevada, our nation's high at 79 degrees today. In California, they will have warm weather tomorrow. Gang wars and some very overpriced real estate. Up in the Pacific Northwest, they'll have some very tall trees. It'll be clear across the Rockies and the Great Plains, but look out, here comes trouble. And as he blows in, this like huge plume of like, um snow and clouds all over like a lot of precipitation is pushing in look out here comes trouble oh boy frost coming our way look out what will that mean to us in the three rivers area one of those big blue things this cold frigid arctic air this big mass out of the north it'll meet up with all this moisture coming out of the gulf mix together at high altitudes and cause some snow it won't us hit, it won't hit us here at pittsburgh it'll push off and hit altoona Whew. close call Let's take a look at the five-day forecast. Nothing to be too scared about. Bundle up warm, but leave your galoshes at home. I won't be here for the 10 o'clock. Yeah, I have the numbers written down on a separate. You're going to have to bear with on that one. So I try to screw it back and forth. I won't be here for the 10 o'clock. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day, and I'm going out to Punxsutawney for our country's oldest groundhog festival. According to legend, tomorrow, February 2nd, if the groundhog sees his shadow, we will have six more weeks of winter. So, keep your fingers crossed. As he's saying this, he's gone back down to his uh, seating position next to another uh, announcer female. Uh, and she's, sounds like a lot of fun. This is your third year in a row, isn't it? Four, Nan. Four. Thanks, Phil. Up next, Entertainment Weekly's Diane Kigman looks at sex and violence in the movies. I'll play a little jingle at the end for the music. Oh, she should stay with us. Uh, and we're clear. And he, he bolts off from his sitting position and starts getting ready. Have fun in Punxsutawney. For your information, hairdo, there is a major network interested in me. And someone from behind him, behind him chimes up. Uh, yeah, that would be the Home Shopping Network. Thanks, Larry. Go wait in the car. Larry played by um, Chris Elliott. Yeah, I had to look him up real quick. You might have seen him here or there in some things. Anyway, he goes off. Go wait. Thanks, Larry. Go wait in the van. Okay, he takes off. Talks to this, um, I guess like a producer of the show or something again. He's like, oh, that was nice. Big trees. I'll oh, stop it, Henny. Uh, can you handle the 10 tomorrow? If you don't want to rush back, I can do the 5 o'clock tomorrow. You think I want to stay an extra second and punk Tony? Please. Uh, Rita thinks it would be great to stay for some of the other events. Get some incredible footage, the people and the fun, the excitement. 
You haven't worked with her yet. She's really nice. I think she's going to be a really good producer. You guys will have fun. Uh, and we see, uh, while he's saying this, we see Rita played by Andy McDowell. Um, it's weird because they say green screen, but I think the screen is blue because I know she has like a blue coat for like almost every scene she's in. So she has like the... So she's like messing around with the blue screen and you can see like from the other camera, it's just her head and her hands just... just <laughs> giving herself the giggles. It's that he's watching her do this this whole time. This whole counter is just like, mm, she's fun, but not my kind of fun. I will be here for the five o'clock. Rita. And they take off and uh, first the song I had, I had to remember these written down for the uh, soundtrack over on YouTube. Uh, don't recognize this person. Delbert McClinton. The song plays is a uh, weatherman. I don't really have any like lyrics or whatever. So just to. Uh, just trying to keep in the flow. But anyway, they're out driving into the van on their way to Punxsutawney. And they have the three of them have a conversation. It's uh, him, it's Phil, Larry, and Rita. Uh, can you keep a secret, Larry? I'm probably leaving PBH. So this will be the last time we do the Groundhog together. What's wrong with the Groundhog Festival? Yeah, in San Diego, I covered the Swallows returning to Capistrano six years. Someday somebody will see me interviewing a Groundhog and think I don't have a future. Rita's uh, chiming in. Oh, I think it's a nice story. He comes out. He looks around. Wrinkles his little nose. He sees the shadow or he doesn't see it. It's nice. People like it. You are new, aren't you? People like blood sausage, too. People are morons. Nice attitude. Yeah, it's Phil saying this all the time, by the way. Uh, it doesn't say the what you call. So I'm going to try and keep up with that as best I can. Of who's saying what. Look in the mirror. See what you look like you do in that groundhog thing. For me, once he comes out. Looks at this little shadow. Would you like some blood sausage? I like blood sausage. No. Anyway, they arrive at their uh, usual hotel. Phil's been here bef a couple times before, and he just goes, Rita, I can't stay here. Larry's like, pretty Madonna. I'll be saying that a few times. I'll handle it, says Rita. What's the matter? Phil's like, I hate this place. I stayed here two years ago. I was miserable. It's a flea bag. I'm not staying here. And she says, you're not staying here. I'm not. Larry's dropping me off. I booked you in a nice bed and breakfast. Great. I think this is a trait of a really good producer. Keep the talent happy. Anything I can do. Would you help me with my pelvic th tilt? Within reason. Would you like to have dinner with Larry and me? Oh, no, thank you. I've seen Larry eat. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shove this whole fist in it. Get your sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Don't be late. And when he walks off and Larry goes, did he actually call himself the talent? Giggling to themselves. All right, first of many recurring scenes throughout this movie. Uh, when I go like that, it's usually like a new day or something like that. So I'm going to try and keep a track of that as best I can when I snap my fingers. Usually it's followed by um, Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe over the uh, the alarm clock. It's like 6 a.m. on the dot. And put your little hand in mine. There ain't no hill or mountain we can't climb. Babe, I got you, babe. And then disc jockey over, overhead, I was like, all right, campers, rise and shine. Don't forget your booties because it's cold out there today. And it's cold out there every day. What is this, Miami Beach? Not hardly. You can expect hazardous travel later with that uh, that blizzard thing. Oh, that blizzard thing. Yeah, it, here's the report. The National Weather Service is calling for a big blizzard thing. They are, but there's another reason why today is especially exciting, especially cold. Yeah, it's especially cold. Yes, okay. But the big question on everybody's lips, on their chap lips, and their chap lips, do you think Phil will come out and see his shadow? Punks a Tony Phil. That's right, Woodchuck Chuckers. It's Groundhog Day. Get out there and chuck that hog. Sweet, sweet. Go here. Go back and forth, two shock jocks. Anyway, heads down, runs into a very um, heavy set individual. Morning. You have to see the groundhog? Yes, I am. You think it's going to be an early spring? I'm predicting March 21st. Good guess. Yeah, I think that actually is the first day of spring. Heads down the stairs, uh, runs to the owner of the bed and breakfast, Mrs. Lancaster. Uh, did you sleep well, Mr. Connors? I slept alone, Miss Lancaster. Would you like some coffee? Uh, I don't suppose there's any possibility of getting an espresso or a cappuccino this morning. I don't really know how to spell espresso or cappuccino. Hmm? Oh, this looks fine. Uh, I hope you enjoy the festivities. I'm sure I will. There's talk of a blizzard. 
We may catch a break and have that biz- bleh, bleh. Already mess this up, because you just- bleh, 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 bleh. There's lose my tongue again. Alright. <clears throat> we may catch a break and have that blizzard blow by us. All this moisture coming up out of the south will probably push on east of us at high altitudes. It'll crystallize and give us what we call snow. Probably will be some accumulation, but here in Punxsutawney, our high will be about... 30s today, 10s tonight. Chance of preci preci precipitation. Wow. 20% today, 20% tomorrow. Did you want to talk about the weather, or are you just making chit-chat? Chit-chat. All right, see you later. Bye. Will you be checking out today? Chance of departure today, 100%. At the door. Uh, goes across this little, little street here. Uh, goes around the block, sees a bum. Uh, an old, really old bum. Uh, just you know, almost guy just sitting in there, kind of freezing out the weather, and he... Phil, like, checks his pockets for money. He's like, mm, mm, mm. Nah, got nothing. Sorry. And then, uh, I don't know this guy. Wait, hang on. Let me... Will it show up here? Oh, I gotta move the watcher call because this guy's a recurring character, too. Uh, Steven Tobolowski. I've seen him in a couple things, too, but, uh, I mostly remember him for being, um, this character coming up. He notices Phil Connors walking by. He's like, he's like in a... He's got, like, a hat on. He's carrying a suitcase. He's like, oh, Phil? Hey, Phil? He just runs right over to Phil. And he's like, oh, Phil Connors, I thought that was you. How you doing? Thanks for watching. Now, don't tell me you don't remember me, because I sure as heck fire remember you. Not a chance. Ned! Takes off his hat. Ryerson! Needle nose Ned, Ned the head. Come on, buddy, Case Western High. Ned Ryerson, I did the... The whistling belly button trick at the high school talent show. Bing! Ned Ryerson got the shingles real bad senior year. It almost didn't graduate. Bing again! Ned Ryerson, I dated your sister Mary Pat till you told me not to anymore. Ned Ryerson? Bing! Bing! Oh, hey, did you turn pro with that belly button thing or what? Oh, actually, I sell insurance. What a shock. Do you have life insurance? Because you can always lose a little more. <laughs> am I right? 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 Uh, Ned, I would love to stand here and talk with you. <laughs> I'm not going to. Oh, no. <laughs> see ya. No, it's okay. I'll walk with you. You know, whenever I see an opportunity now, I charge it like a bull. Net the bull. That's me now. I have friends who live and die by the actuary tables, and I just say, hey, it's a one big crap shoot. Anywho, have you ever heard of a single life premium life? Because I think that would really would be the ticket for you. God, it is so good to see you. Uh, what are you doing for dinner? Something else. It's been great seeing you, Needlehead. Take care. He runs off, um, manages to step his, uh, his entire foot is, like, sploosh, like, a giant hole, like, where the, um, like, kind of in the middle of the curb and the, uh, street, and just, like, oh, because of all the snow and all the precipitation, he's like, his foot just goes right into the water, and Ned's replies, <laughs> watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. <laughs> Uh, and he walks off, uh, headed to, um, headed out to, um, what is known as Gobbler's Knob. I don't know if that's, like, a real place or not. I didn't do much, a lot of research. Just trying to do all the words and everything so I wouldn't forget too much. And there was a couple things in here that this script missed, of course, that I remember. But anyway, we get that, uh, recurring theme, uh, the Pennsylvania Polka. Dun, 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 ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Strike up the music, the band has begun. Dum, 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 the Pennsylvania polka. Pick out your partner and join in the fun. Dum, 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 the Pennsylvania polka. It started in Scranton. It's now number one. Boom, 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 boom. It's gonna entertain you. Phil over here. Rita notices him walking by through all the people. Just, it's a, it's a party. It's a blast. Everyone hanging out. Just the life band and everything just waiting for uh this this whole gathering for the the groundhog but rita knows rita and frank are already uh on set waiting for phil and she's like phil over here where have you been and phil's like oh it was horrible a giant leech got me oh, you're missing all the fun these people are great some been partying all night they sing till they get too cold and then they sit by the fire to get warm and they sing some more yeah they're hicks rita all right, he fresh ends up getting ready to do the performance. He's like, uh, did you guys sleep okay without me? You tossed and turned, didn't you? And Rita's like, you're incredible. Who told you? 
All right, it's Groundhog time. They get set up. They're about to do the festivities. Everyone's everyone's cheering. It's like, oh, it's time, it's time. And Phil's like, on moon, three, two, one. Once a year, the eyes of the nation turn to this tiny Pennsylvania hamlet to watch a master at work. The master? Punxsutawney Phil, the world's most famous weatherman, the groundhog, who, as legend has it, can predict the coming of an early spring. So I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, does Phil feel lucky? Anyway, they do the whole festivities. There's like a, it's like a small log with like a handle in the front. I think they actually do do this. I've seen this on the news myself a couple times. I don't know if it's like actual gobblers now or anything. So maybe there is some truthful to this. I don't know how much, but again, I'm getting too hard into the story. But anyway, knock on, little knock on the door to pull him out. And Phil's just going through the whole thing, just ex- explaining it as it's happening. It's like, that's eh, the same old shtick every year. They got the big stick, wraps on the door. They pull the little rat out, they talk to him, the rat talks back, and then they tell us what's going to happen. They pull him out, and everyone's like, yay, it's the girl. <laughs> She's like, aw, Rita's, aw, isn't he cute? And Phil, like, takes his, like, uh, his top lip, puts it behind his teeth, like, this, and like, uh, hey, uh, you, you like your guys with, uh, prominent, uh, upper teeth? And Rita's like, no. <laughs> All right, uh, head honcho guy, Buster, played by, um, I think Bill Murray's real-life brother. Is it Brian Murray, I believe? I just remember, also remember him from uh, Scrooge, where he did a little part little part here or there. But you recognize him. He's a very distinct voice. If you've seen him, he's a very distinct, like, very distinct voice. By the way, um, he's the... He plays uh, Buster in this one. I guess he's, like, the mayor, or at least, like, the guy who runs the thing or something. That has some kind of authority, I guess. Maybe he's just, like, the guy that runs this every year and just... But anyway. This February 2nd, at 7.20 and 30 seconds, Punks of Tony Phil, the seer of seers, prognosticator of prognosticators, emerged reluctantly but alertly in Punks of Tony, Pennsylvania, and stood in Groundhoggies. I definitely see a shadow. And the whole crowd erupts, boo, boo. The, the, the band background plays like failure fan for like, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Sorry, folks, six more weeks of winter. Everyone just boo, boo. Phil is just dumbfounded by this and back at it again. All right. All right, on me in three, two, one. The one being uh, flipping the bird. Television really fails to capture the true excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. I, for one, am very grateful to have been here from Punks and Tony. This is Phil Connors so long. They stop taping, and Rita's like, okay, you want to try it again without the sarcasm? Phil's like, we got it. I'm out of here. He just leaves. Larry just looks over. Pretty Madonna's. Anyway, they're going to drive back, and all hell is broken loose on the highway. There's like a s- snow and ice everywhere. Like, you can barely make out anything. There's like cars piled up everywhere trying to get back on the main road and there's just no go. I feels looking out like, oh, would you look at this? I think, actually, I think that's Frank saying that. Would you look at this? It feels like, what is going on? Frank's like, is it Frank? Am I confusing Frank with, uh, no, it's Larry. Why am, th- why am I saying Frank? I think I'd have him confused with Bill Murray's character from Scrooge. I know I would, I was going to mess that up at some point. <laughs> Um, Larry, yeah, Larry. I gotta remember that. But Phil's like, what's going on? And Larry's like, oh, I don't know, Phil. Maybe it's that giant blizzard we're not supposed to get. Oh, this is impossible. Phil's inc- just, oh, no. He honks the horn. He's like, whoa, 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 hey, hey. Nobody honks this horn but me, okay, pal? Yeah, it's, it's, a uh, fr- I did it again, Frank's van. Uh, Larry's van. But yeah, as they're getting caught, he, uh, pulls in. Again, the cars aren't moving anywhere, and Phil's just like, no, no, damn it. So he gets out. There's snow still be- just pouring down everywhere. Like, it's like, like it's a blizzard. But he's out there, like, with no coat on. He's just like, like, he's like got this, uh, it's just like, I mean, I had a coat when he did the, the report, but now he's just. So already, by the time he even gets to the next part, which is like this uh, state trooper or something, get like, well, he looks like one because he's got like the hat or something. Yeah, maybe it's like local police. He could be state trooper, just but 
he's out there just like basically directing everything going on because there's like this huge pile up of the uh, not a pile up of cars but nobody's like moving because they're just like getting over there but i was like uh, he's, he's just this one guy like take this rig out of here I mean, Phil gets up to him and says, Okay, Commander, what's going on here? There's nothing going on. We're closed on the road. Big blizzard moving in. And you can see, like, it's coming down. And Phil's just like, What blizzard? It's just a couple of flakes. I want you to listen to the weather. We got a major storm here. Phil's just, I make the weather. All this moisture's coming out of the Gulf. We'll push off to the east and hit a turn. Pal, you got that moisture on your head. Now, you got two options. You can go back to Punks and Tony, or you can go ahead and freeze to death. It's your choice. So what's it going to be? Just looks behind him. Cars, more cars coming in. There's, like, honking. There's, but no one's getting anywhere. He just, like, looks back, and then he looks at the cop. I'm thinking. <laughs> Next scene, I guess, is, uh, I guess it's, like, a nearby gas station because somebody outside is, like, shoveling the snow. This will come important after the, after the scene. But, yeah, Phil's on, like, a payphone. He's, like, all the long-distance lines are down. What about the satellites? Is it snowing in space? Don't you have a line you keep open for emergencies or for celebrities? I'm both. I'm a celebrity in an emergency. Can you patch me through on that line, please? Anyway, uh, and again, walking back in from the snow. He's, uh, he was outside, but then he came back in. Bonk on the head. <laughs> he's walking past, didn't even see him. He just walks on through. Just... Next scene is a downstairs bar or something. Or is there like a thing where you can like walk in? I don't know if it's like a downstairs or something. Like that. Maybe part of it was like a separate building. I don't know. But this shows up in a couple scenes as well. This this uh this bar, this little dive here. Just looks the guy over. He's got a Phil's got like a I guess like half full kind of like shot glass or like a drink glass or something like that. It's like, can I have one more of these with booze in it, please? Ooh, I like it here. And uh. Rita and Larry head down and see from behind. Uh, they meet up with him. And it's like, oh, Phil, are you going to the Groundhog dinner? And Phil's like, yeah, I had Groundhog for lunch. It wasn't bad. It tastes like chicken. You two run along. And he looks over at Larry in like full sweater. It's, it's like one of those sweater vests, but not really. Or it's just, it's kind of a brownish kind of thing. It's just, Phil takes one look. It's like, whoa, looking foxy tonight, man. Hey, is your troop selling cookies again this year? Larry's like, oh, it's so funny, Phil. Oh. Rita says, mm, what are you going to do? Phil's just defeated. He's just like, I'm going to go back to my room, take a hot shower, maybe read Hustler or something. Suit yourself. And he does take that shower, but there's no hot water. And he's like, oh, God. Oh, ah. <laughs> he's like, trying to turn the water off real quick and then finally gives up. He just leaps out of the thing. <laughs> Now, next to it, he's in, a, he's in a full robe, and he's walking by, like, an upstairs, about to head to his hotel room, I guess, for the night. And he walks by Mrs. Lancaster, and he's just like, Yo, Mom, isn't there any hot water? Oh, there wouldn't be any today. <laughs> of course not, silly me. Sweet dreams. Walks back to his hotel room for the night. Next soon. And put your little head in mine. There ain't no hill or a mountain we can't climb. Okay, campers, rise and shine. Don't forget your booties because it's cold out there today. It's cold out there every day. What is this, Miami Beach? And uh, Phil chimes in, you know, nice going, boys, playing yesterday's tube. And when they go through their spiel, by the time they get to chat, uh, especially cold, but the big question on everybody's lips, and Phil's like, chap lips. And they do the whole, it's still going, punks to Tony Phil. That's right, woodchuck chuckers, it's Groundhog Day. And he looks outside, like, through the window. I forget to mention he did that the first time he did this, but again, he sees, like, the same sight. There's people everywhere. There's cars all headed out to this area. He just looks outside. He's like, what the hell? And he heads downstairs, runs to that same uh, heavy set dude from the last from last time. Morning. Off to see the Groundhog? Yeah. Think it'll be an early spring? Didn't we do this yesterday? I don't know what you're talking about. Grabs the dude, props him up against the up against the wall, and Phil says, Don't mess with me, pork chop. What day is this? And he's confused, but he's like, Uh it's February second. Groundhog Day. Phil's like, oh. Let's him go. D yeah, dust him off like oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it was yesterday. <laughs> And he walks off. 
I got, I got a scare. Anyway, uh, down to Mrs. Lancaster. Did you sleep well, Mr. Mr. Connors? Did I sleep well? Would you like some coffee? Uh, please, I think I'll have a double. I hope you enjoy the festivities. There's talk of a blizzard. Mrs. Lancaster, do you ever have deja vu? Well, I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. No, that's okay. Thank you. Will you be checking out today? Looks back, still, like, wondering what the hell's going on. He's just... I'd say the chances of departure is... 70%. 7580. Heads outside, sees one person walking by. And uh, sees one person about to head off and feels like, Excuse me! Excuse me! Where's everybody going? She looks back to the chick. She replies, To Gobbler's Knob! It's Groundhog Day! And feels like, It's still just once a year, isn't it? I mean, next thing he walks by the bomb again, still checks his pocket. It's like, Oh, yeah, this guy. Just keeps walking through, and once again, Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Phil, my gosh, Phil Connors. Now, don't say you don't remember me, because I sure as heck fire remember you. Well? It feels like Ned Ryerson? Bang! Oh, first shot right out of the box. So how's it going, old buddy? Actually, I'm not feeling well. You, you excuse me? Well, it's funny you should mention your health, because you will never guess what I do now. Do you sell insurance? <laughs> oh, bing again! You were sharp as a tack today. Hey, do you have life insurance? Because if you do, you can always use more, right? <laughs> Who couldn't? Oh, you know something, though? I got a feeling. <whistles> you ain't got any. I'm all right, 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 all right. He's like, oh, I gotta go. Sploosh, same puddle. <laughs> Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. Bum ba da 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 yeah, Same old polka rocket through, but now he's, he's like, again, looking around, wondering, like, what the hell is going on? Phil, over here! We didn't see him again. Where have you been? Phil's like, Rita, do me a favor. I need someone to give me a good hard slap in the face. How's that? Good. I, I back it, but she forehand is I backhanded, but I gotta get the look. Cause she, it sounds really good and audible, real good, real good. And uh, Larry's there, like, hey, if you need help with the other chick, let me know. I'm right here. And Rita looks him over, like, something's going on. Are you drunk or something? Feels like drunk's more fun. Can I be serious for a minute? Rita's like, I don't know. Can you? Yes, I'm being serious. I'm having a problem. I may be having a problem. Festive is about to start, and Rita's like, oh, okay, it's Groundhog time. It feels like, see? I knew you were going to say that. I really feel weird. Rita just looks him over. Let's just do this, then we'll talk. All right, on me in three, two, one. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again. That must mean we're at Gobbler's Knob, waiting for the forecast from the world's most famous groundhog weatherman, Punk Tony Field. Who's just about to tell us how much more winter we can expect? She just looks over all that, sees all the crash, she's like, oh, this is a riot. Pulls out, the, does the same thing, pulls out the groundhog. No, isn't he cute? And he goes through a spiel. This February 2nd, punks to Tony Phil, so and so. And Phil looks over, drops the mic in his hand, and just walks off. And she's like, Phil, where are you going? Anyway, back to his next scene's back to his hotel room. He's on, he's on a, a different phone this time. It's like a dial in phone, probably, because again, 93. And he's just like, yes, yeah, sport, I know there's a blizzard. When are the long distance line going to be repaired? Well, what if there is no tomorrow? There wasn't one today. Hello? Hello? Slams the phone. Back to bed. And put your little hand in mine. There ain't no hill or a mountain we can't climb. Fill the jolts up and now he's just racing off like just blown by everybody he goes to the guy morning off to see the groundhog doesn't even stop keeps going did you sleep well mister out the door he goes uh walks through see uh, he doesn't notice the bump but yeah he gets startled by him he's like oh sees ned hey phil 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 connor's like and he still just shoves him away he's like what <laughs> oh 
Oh, well, don't you say you don't remember me, because I sure heck if I remember you. It's me, Ned. Well, he's running with him this whole time. Ned takes off the hat. Ryerson, needle nose head, Ned the head, case went survive. Come on, but hey! Like, continues running. Puddle again, but just, it doesn't stop him at all. He takes the puddle and just keeps running. Once again, tilt up your carpet, the drone has begun. Over here! Where have you been? It, it feels like, uh, can we talk about a uh, non-work matter? And Rita's like, you never talk about work. We really have to talk right now. Come on, pulls her away. And um, Frank's like, hey. And he looks over back at him. He's like, oh, it's a creative meeting about it. Don't worry about it. She's like, well, wait a second. We got work to do. And, and Phil says, no, I don't. I've already done it twice. Now, when you get finished, will you meet me at the diner? And he just takes off. And she's like, well, Phil, what was that all about? Oh, no, that's, sorry, that's uh, Larry's sign. What was that all about? I don't know. Prima Donnas. All right, new scene at the diner. A uh, waiter named by the name of Doris, old we'll later, comes up, and uh, she's like, more coffee, hun? And Rita's like, no, thanks, just the check, please. These sticky buns are heaven. And I think she looks him over, and uh, I think she notices that it's, hey, it's a uh, weatherman Phil Connors. She's like, aren't they? I mean, the plate of dishes just, you just hear a crash and just just jolts everybody. Uh, like a waiter drops a plate trade of dishes or like plate or plates or some something along those lines. I don't think they break or anything, but you just hear like a loud clanging noise of just like plates hitting almost the floor. I don't, I don't they don't they don't sound like they've broken, but I mean, backstanders is like, hey, just put that anywhere, pal. Yeah, good save. And Rita finally looks over at Phil like, okay, tell me why you're too sick to work, and it better be good. Rita. I'm reliving the same day over and over. Groundhog Day. Today. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. No. Really. This is the third time. It's like yesterday never happened. I'm racking my brain, but I can't imagine why you'd make this up. I'm not making it up. I'm asking you for help. What do you want me to do? I don't know. You're a producer. Come up with something. You want my advice? I think you should get your head examined. You expect me to believe a silly story like that, Phil? Yeah, the, the, they didn't say it in here, but the Phil part's important because the uh, guy behind her notices. He turns around just with, with Phil, like the groundhog Phil. And he's like, yeah, like the groundhog Phil. He's like, hey, look out for your shadow, buddy. <laughs> Morons, your bus is leaving. I guess it's a way of saying, idiots, your village is calling you. It's a more modernized version of that. Your bus is leaving. That's it. Good luck saying, getting away with saying that nowadays. Oof. Uh, Larry walks in. Hey, are you guys ready? We better get going if we're going to stay ahead of the weather. She's like, uh, says something along those lines. She's like, okay, we're good. Uh, we should really talk about this back in Pittsburgh. And Phil's like, I'm not going back to Pittsburgh. Why not? I told you because of the blizzard. I thought you said that was going to hit Altoona. <laughs> I know that's what I said. Something's really wrong, Phil. I think you need help. That's what I've been saying, Rita. I need help. Next thing is he's at a psychiatrist. Uh, not a psychiatrist, sorry. The doctor, he's getting his uh, x-ray. He's getting like x-rays done and his head. Actually, actually getting his head examined. It's played by... um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, kind of a partner in crime for Bill Murray. He's, he was in Stripes. He played Egon in the... Two Ghostbusters movie. God, I can't remember his name. I'm sure it'll, it'll pop up to me as I'm going through. Can't remember for the life of me right now. I knew I was gonna. I probably have it on IMDb. Let me see. Harold Ramis. That's it. Harold Ramis. That's right. Ramis. That's what I was. I was trying to remember. Anyway, uh, Harold Ramis, head doctor, looking him over. See a bunch of X-rays. He's like, mm, well, no spots, no clots. No tumors, no lesions, no aneurysms, at least none that I can sue, Mr. Connors. If you want a CAT scan or an MRI, you're going to have to go into Pittsburgh. I can't go into Pittsburgh. Why can't you go into Biz Pittsburgh? I told you, there's a blizzard. Oh, right, the blizzard. You know what you may need, Mr. Connors? A biopsy. A psychiatrist. Yeah, we get to the psychiatrist. Okay. And he goes, uh, looks him over. He's already on the couch, and the psychiatrist looking at him over. He's like, that's a very unusual problem, Mr. Connors. Most of my work is with couples, families. I have an alcoholic now. Phil sets up, looks him over. 
but you went to college, right? It wasn't like veterinary psychology, was it? Didn't you take some course that covered this stuff? Psychiatrist is, says, sort of, I guess. A abnormal psychology? Phil exhales. So, what do I do? Psychiatrist says, I think we should meet again. How's tomorrow for you? And tomorrow it's like, triggers him and he just covers his face with a pillow. And the psychiatrist says, oh, is that not good? And he's, his hand is like, he's hitting himself, but he's got like the pillow, so you just hear like, pillow, like, two, three. Uh, next scene at a, a bowling alley, but they also have like booze in there. So like, they hear like a straight go off before we, it cuts back to Phil with like a, like a mug of beer in his hand. He sets it down. And it's, uh, I think it's the two guys from the diner before, or like the Phil, like the Groundhog Phil. At least I recognize the one of them. The other one might have been sitting with him too. I know he has a name too in the movie. We'll get to that later. Anyway, um, it's just Phil waxing philosophical looking over. He, says, he just says, um, I was in the Virgin Islands once. I met a girl. We ate lobster, drank pina coladas. At sunset, we made love like sea otters. And the two bums are like, whoa. <laughs> you know, that was a pretty good day. Why could I get that day? Over and over and over. Can't know his name, but it's the, lar the larger of the bums. There's like a heavy set bum, and there's like, uh, not a bum, like drunkards, or I guess, or something like that. There's like a heavy set guy and a guy with like a full on beard. The heavy set guy's like, um, you know, some guys would take a look at this glass. And they would say that glass is half empty. Other guys would say that glass is half full. I peg you as a glass half empty kind of guy, am I right? Phil continues. And he asks them, What would you do if you were stuck in one place and every day was exactly the same and nothing you did mattered? The bearded guy looks over and is like, It about sums it up for me. Anyway, they're about to leave, but they're all clearly under the influence. Well, good luck. I'll drop you off. And he, uh, he's about to get, uh, the heavy set guy's about to get in the car, but he's also, like, propping the other guy up. Like, he's more out of it than the other one. Like, uh, bearded guy can barely stand on his own power. That's how drunk he is. And he's like, hey, this, this thing sticks. You gotta jiggle it. Come on up here. Oh, gosh. Give me your keys, pal. Friends don't let friends drive. Stand up here, take a deep breath. You okay? You feel okay? Really? You all right? All right. He goes and leaves, and uh, as soon as he leaves, the bearded guy just just falls over, but Phil's got him. Oh, oh okay, okay. I got you. Uh, he asks him, you want to throw up here or in the car? The bearded guy says, I think both. Come on. Anyway, he gets to his car, and he backs up, and he I think he hits like... He's like very slowly, like very rarely, like he's under the influence too. Clearly, I think he hits like a a trash can or something like that. Like, like you know what? I don't think I should be driving either. No, I no, no, I don't. I don't either. Phil takes the uh, Phil gets in the the uh, the driver's seat, and everybody just shuffles off to the left side of the front uh, front seats. Like, okay, watch your head, watch your head, watch your nose. Don't break anything. All right, let's not forget seat belts, guys. Cool. Close the door, and the beer guy's like, Hey, who else could go for some flapjacks right now? Start the car. And he drives off. Phil looks over him and he's like, Let me ask you guys a question. Shoot. What if there were no tomorrow? The heavy set guy says, No tomorrow. That would mean there'd be no consequences. There would be no hangovers. We could do whatever we wanted. Yeah. And Phil, light bulb goes on his head. He's like, that's true. We could do whatever we wanted. And he swerves and like rams into something. It's like a trash can or a, a mailbox. Because again, the next line is uh, the heavy set guy says, "Yeah, if we wanted to hit mailbox, we could let Ralph drive." Huh, yeah. A uh, nearby police officer notices this and uh, turns his lights on, looks over, starts to starts to follow. He's like, "Oh, hey, I I think they want you to stop." And Phil's just like, "Hang on," <laughs> just swerves over. <laughs> I think he backs up into the car or something else and like and starts to figure it and now we've got a chase going on. And Phil's just 
going on and on as the chase. Yeah, it's the same thing your whole life. Clean up your room, stand up straight, pick up your foot, take it like a man. Be nice to your sister. Don't mix beer and wine, ever. And then the chase starts, you end up like in front of something, he stops and just dis in next line is, oh yeah, don't drive on the railroad tracks. And heavy set guy's like, uh, Phil, that's one I happen to agree with. And my car starts moving, police office, police car behind him at the same time. So now both of them are like this on the seats, like, because they're on the track. So you get like the up and down and the bumps and everything, because it's not even road. And Phil, the whole time while he's driving, he's like, I don't know. Oh, that's the name Gus. I don't know Gus. Watch me forget that name later. Sometimes I think you just have to take the, the big chances. And the police car in the back is like, this is the police. Pull over the car immediately. <laughs> Gus looks back. Hey, we're talking in here. I need a woman again. I can't give her. I can never do keep a shit. <laughs> Hey, we're talking in here. <laughs> well, anyway, it's, 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 from there it gets like really serious because on the other end, eh, from far away, a train's coming. And they're just looking at him over like, Phil? Yeah, yep, yep. Phil's like, eh, yeah. I'm betting he's going to swerve first, getting closer. And Phil? Phil! <laughs> Durham's off the... Like, a split second before the train's going to plow right into him. He just... Veers off to the side. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like a crossing. I think it's like what, just a crossing guard or something like that. that. You know, when the train, you get like the late sun crossing. It's like ding, ding, ding. And then the little hand or like arm thing goes down. He just plows through that keeps going. Um, I guess the cop has to take like a detour or something along those lines because he makes it through. He's just laughing behind. He's, and Phil's just, he's got the giggles. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to live by their rules anymore. And bearded guy's like, I noticed that. You make choices and you live with them. Ho oh! ho! When he bears off, he like, I guess he hits like a curb or like a. It's either a curb, a lamppost, or a hydrant. I can't remember exactly, but it's enough to like stop the car finally. And then there's like a cop car that has. I guess the same or another cop car maybe went around and followed him because one does show up. Anyway, he gets out of his car and like. Comes out from behind him, little raps on the window. Oh, yeah, I forgot. As, as they hit the crash, the heavyset guy, Gus, is like, No, oh, oh, my knee. But the cop up there raps on the front door window. is about to ask for his license and registration, I guess. I'm like, he didn't just up and chase the guy. Like, what if this guy's, like, actually dangerous? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, pretty trusting of him. Raps on the door. Phil rolls down the window. Yeah, let me handle this. Um... Three cheeseburgers, two large fries, two chocolate shakes, one large Coke. Heavy, and the bearded guy's like, and some flapjacks. And Phil looks over the cop. Too early for flapjacks? <laughs> That's the other great line. <laughs> Next scene, Phil walks into a, I guess it's like a solo cell, or at least enough to just fit him, maybe one more person, but you have to stuff him in like sardines. Thunk. The cell door closes. Then put your little hand in mine. Phil looks over. He's back in bed. He's like, oh, rise and shine, campers. And don't forget your booze because it's cold out there today. Oh, it's cold out there, everybody. What is this? My M. Bleach. Not hardly. I mean, he's excited. Because, again, it happened. No no consequences, no hangovers. So now he's, so now he's all in for this portion of the uh, story for a little bit. I mean, downstairs, Mrs. Lancaster just... Boots of the line on every punch. Sup like a baby, thank you. Oh, I'd love some of your coffee. Uh, Flurry's moving in later, but the blizzard will hit outside of town. Uh, Mrs. Lancaster, was anybody for me? Uh, was anybody looking for me here this morning? Perhaps a state official, maybe a blue hat, gun, nightstick? Uh, no one like that, will there be? Apparently not. Mwah. Right on the lips. Hold my room for me, please. I'm staying an extra day. Walks back, sees the old guy again. Hey, I'll catch you tomorrow, Pops. It doesn't have this in the script for some reason, but Ned notices him. Hey, Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? Ned? Bam! Punches him square in the face. He falls over like a... <laughs> About to step into the puddle again. He's like, oh, 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 that's right, that's right. Waits it out. Uh, another passerby walks uh, beside Phil and sp splashes into that puddle and says, oh, jeez. 
And Phil just like, catch up, looks it over, throws one leg over the other, and just leaps over it. Uh, Nick sings back at the that diner where Doris works, and it's Phil and Rita again. But now Phil has like practically the entire table just littered with all these baked goods, like uh probably just ordered the entire dessert menu from this place that are just all over the place and he's going to town on all of them just eating them all away and Rita's just like incredulous staring at him by by all of this just like I like to see a man of advancing years throwing caution to the wind that's inspiring in a way feels like my years are not advancing as fast as you might think and Doris comes in more coffee hun yeah just keep it coming please sure thing Psh, plates a glass again startles everybody but Phil he's just yeah, it doesn't even even look up to continue eating. I think I think at some point he has a cigarette too. He's got that going too. Pastry in one hand, cigarette in the other, or like lighter somewhere, just all that sort of thing. Yeah, just put that anywhere, pal. Good save. Rita just looks him over like, don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles. Feels like I don't worry about anything anymore. Rita's like, what makes you so special? Everyone worries about something. What's it with exactly what makes me so special? I don't even have to floss. Oh, that's another great scene. Um, it's either like I, like an entire pastry layer. It's like a, I guess a bear call or something. And he just like the whole thing just like squeezes it in there as best he can. <laughs> She's just disgusted. And Phil just looks at her and like, what? <laughs> I don't know if I can do that as much justice unless I actually like have something up here <laughs> to eat. And I don't want to, I don't want to chance it and choke or anything. And hits him with um, a poem. She just looks him over. The wretch, concentered all in self, living shall forfeit fair renown, and doubly dying shall go down to the vile dust from whence he sprung, unwept, unhonored, and unsung, Sir Walter Scott. He feels like. <laughs> He's like, oh, you don't like poetry? Oh, I love poetry. <laughs> I just thought that was Willard Scott. I was confused. You think I'm acting like this because I'm egocentric? I know you're egocentric. It's your defining characteristic. Larry comes in. You guys ready? We're gonna get. We better get going if we're gonna see ahead of the weather. Well, thanks, Larry. Well, oh, would you like a doggy bag for all this? I don't think I'm gonna stay here and finish. I thought you hated this town. That's beginning to grow on me. Larry, quit staring. These are excellent. Bon appetit. And they leave. Uh, Phil eyes a uh, pretty lady. Heads over to chatter up. And he's just like, ah, did you see the groundhog this morning? Mm-hmm. I never miss it. What's your name? Nancy Taylor. And you are, what high school did you go to? What? High school. Lincoln in Pittsburgh? Who are you? Who's your senior English teacher? Are you kidding? No, no, no. Your, your 12th grade English teacher was Mrs. Walsh. Mrs. Walsh. Yeah. Nancy. Lincoln. Walsh. Okay, thanks very much. He just leaves, and she's like, hey! Bum, ba da ba bum bum ba Anyway, back to the Pennsylvania Polka. He's looking around for Nancy, and she goes over there uh, by herself dancing up a storm. It's, it seems like a, a fairly old woman, probably in her late 20s, early 30s, dancing kind of like a... <laughs> Eagle part's cute and maybe a little disturbing. But Phil's just like, oh, Nancy? Nancy Taylor, Phil Connors. Wow, there's none of a lot of this isn't in the what you call it. Huh. Lincoln Phil Connors, Lincoln High School. Wow, that's that's amazing. Uh, I sat next to you in Mrs. Walsh's English class. I'm sorry, that's amazing. You don't remember me, do you? Um, I even asked you to the prom. Phil Connors. I was short, and I sprouted. Well, gosh, how are you? Great. You look terrific. You look very, very terrific. Uh, I have to do this report. Oh, are you a reporter? Yes, I am a weatherman with uh, Channel 9 Pittsburgh. Oh, gosh, I should have known. That's great. Uh, maybe later you and me could... Whatever, sure. Stay right here. Right here. Promise me? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll be right back. Wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, next scene in his hotel room... Full on makeout se session. Uh, telling each other's name. She's like, oh, Phil. And he's like, oh, Rita. Anyway, they, and they stop and she looks him over and turns the light on. Who's Rita? 
How should I know? What is this, some kind of one-night stand? On the contrary, Nancy. I, I love you. I've always loved you. This is going to seem sudden, but... Nancy, will you be my wife? She's just blown away by this. She's oh, Phil. He's like, oh, Rita. Nancy. Whatever. <laughs> Next scene. Are you sitting on a park bench? Sitting on a park bench. <laughs> just looking over left and right. And Phil says, a gust of wind. A dog barks. Burp, burp, burp. Cue the truck. And it's this uh, big armored truck where uh, that would go to like banks and with uh, that would take the money from them and put them into the bank. And drives up. Back doors open up. Exit Herman. Walk into the bank. Herman, one of the armed guards. The other one is exit Felix and stand there with a not so bright look upon your face. All right, Doris, come on. Let's go. Doris Lynchley walking by. Yeah, fix your bra, honey. There you go. That's better. This whole time, Felix, well, it's um, parodying the conversation they're having. Felix! How you doing, Doris? Can I have a roll of quarters? Anyway, he gets up and starts walking slowly towards the armored car as he's saying, 10, 9, 8, car, just stops, lets it go by, continues walking. Six, five, uh, one of the rolls quarters just like spills on the floor, so he says quarters. Three, two, and while they're looking over the bags, Phil manages to, or uh, look at the coins rather, Phil manages to grab one of the bags and just take off. And one of the guards looks over, he's like, uh, hey, did I bring out two bags or one? I don't know. Next scene, car pulls up into this uh, movie theater. Cowboy boot with chap, so ching, ching. move up. Uh, camera pans up. It's Phil in like a cowboy outfit, poncho, maybe like a one of cigarettes in hand or something like that. Very, very like out of Clint Eastwood, probably. And she's with this uh, other woman now, not Nancy, but another woman who uh, we only see this one time. She's in a full-on maid outfit. Like a French mood. And I thought we were going to a costume party. It feels like, like in character, I guess. Like, it's like I said, I love this film. Seen it over a hundred times. Phil, I told you. Call me Bronco. Sorry, Bronco. And he's walking by, uh, spots Nancy. He's like, oh, hello, Nancy. She looks him over, has no idea who she is. She's just like, like puzzled and quizzically looking at him and then just, and then just walks off. Because again, this is her new day. She has no idea. My old fiancé doesn't remember me. So they, then, then he walks to the, with the, his new date to the front of the matinee. Talks to the person that weren't running the front desk. Yeah, that'll be uh, one adult and uh, the girl looks over. She's like, two adults? Two adults, I guess. All right, that's a... Uh, that's it for that portion, and then the next portion is, uh, well, you'll see. I think this is the um, trying to get with Rita portion. So we get a, from the TV truck is Phil saying this, who as legend has it can predict the coming of an early spring. So I guess the question we really have to ask ourselves is, does Phil feel lucky? And then while they're, because it's them going over the tapes, I guess, like the editing and everything else, like on the edit, cutting room floor and all that stuff. And so it's Phil and Rita by themselves just doing this, and uh, Phil asks, Rita, if you had one day to live, what would you do with it? I don't know, Phil. What you dying of? No, I mean, the whole world is about to explode. What do you do? I just want to know where to put the camera. What are you looking for, a date for the weekend? I'm just interested in you. What do you want? What do you like? What do you think about? What kind of men are you interested in? What do you do for fun? Is this for real? You're trying to make me look like a fool. I'm just trying to talk like normal people talk. Isn't this how they talk? Close. All right, so talk to me. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. And a donut. All right. Anyway, now they're at the diner and having a serious conversation with uh, one another. So what do you want out of life? Well, I guess I want what everyone wants. Career, love, marriage, children. Are you seeing anyone? I think it's getting too personal. I, I don't think I'm ready to share this with you. 
How about you? What do you want? What I really want is someone like you. Please, why not? Damn office, sorry. What are you looking for? Who's your perfect guy? First of all, he's too humble to know he's perfect. That's me. He's intelligent, supportive, funny. Intelligent, supportive, funny. Me? 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 He's romantic and courageous. Me also? He's got a good body, but doesn't have to look in the mirror every two seconds. I have a great body, and sometimes I can go months without looking. He's kind, sensitive, gentle. He's not afraid to cry in front of me. This is a man we're talking about, right? He likes animals and children and will change poopy diapers. Does he have to use the word poopy? Oh, and he plays an instrument and he loves his mother. I am really close on this one. Really, really close. Next scene is outside by the Channel 9 news van. Phil's got a bunch of wires in his hand, and I guess, like, um, some pliers or bolt cutters to imply that's like, snip the wires of the place, and, uh, two people, uh, passerbys walk through, and uh, I guess they notice, they notice Phil Connors, but he tries to hide the, uh, wires from behind, us, and they're and like, oh, hey, it's Phil Connors. Hello. Thanks for watching. This is important, because the next scene is at the, that downstairs bar I mentioned. Rita's already there. Phil walks, th walks over. So, what are the chances of getting out today? The fan still won't start. Larry's working on it. Now, oh, wouldn't you know it? Can I buy you a drink? Sure. Um, Jim Boom Ice Water. For you, miss? Sweet vermouth on the rocks with a twist, please. What are the chances of getting out of town today? The van won't start. Larry's working on it. Now, oh, wouldn't you know it? Can I buy you a drink? Sure. Uh, sweet vermouth rocks with a twist, please. For you, miss? The same. That's my favorite drink. Mine too. It always makes me think of Rome, the way the sun hits the buildings. Well, what should we drink to? To the groundhog. I always drink to world peace. Can I buy you a drink? Sure. Uh, sweet vermouth rocks with a twist, please. For you, miss. The same. That's my favorite drink. Mine too. It always makes me think of Rome, the way the sun hits the buildings. What shall we drink to? I'd like to say a prayer and drink to world peace. To world peace. World peace. Amen. Now they're at like a gift shop or something like that, ordering some like food, um, some like, uh, not really like pastries, but I think, I think it's, I think it is like a gift shop because you get like that thing, or like a chocolatier or something like that. This is wonderful. Didn't I tell you? How do you know so much about Punks to Tony? I spent a lot of time here. Small town people are more real. That's how I feel. Or is this... Wait, that I, I think I messed it up. Uh, I spent a lot of time here. Small town people are more real. That's how I feel. Really? Would you like some white chocolate? Ugh, don't make me sick. Phil, mental note. No white chocolate. There is something familiar about this. Do you ever have deja vu? Didn't you just ask me that? <laughs> Uh, now they're at this, um, well, they did that, they did the, now they're in, like, this other diner bar establishment, because it's, like, uh, busty maids, I guess, like, like, from the, uh, the Holland or something like that, but they have, like, these big, huge, giant, uh, mugs of beer. And, uh, they're still having a conversation there, it's a little more busy, a little more packed with this place, uh. I think people place too much emphasis on their careers. I wish we could all live in the mountains at high altitudes. That's where I see myself in five years. How about you? Oh, I agree. I just like to go with the flow, see where it leads me. <laughs> it's led you here. It's a million miles from where I started in college. Oh, you weren't in broadcasting or journalism? Believe it or not, I studied 19th century poetry. <laughs> what a complete waste of time. I mean, for someone else, that would be an, an, an incredible waste of time. It's so bold of you to, to choose that. It's incredible. You must be a, a very strong person. I think people place too much emphasis on their careers. I wish we could all live in the mountains at high altitudes. That's where I see myself in five years. What about you? Oh, I agree. I just like to go with the flow, see what happens. 
See where life takes me? Well, it's brought you here. Well, it's a million miles from where I started in college. Oh, you weren't in broadcasting or journalism? Uh, believe it or not, I studied 19th century French poetry. And Phil bust out some French that I'm going to try my best to not mangle completely. And I'll, uh, I have it written down in what it means in English in the video. So I'll, as I say that, I'll, that'll show. Anyway. La fille que j'aimerais. C'est comme bon vie. Qui sait bon fille. On peut jamais you speak French? Oui. Next thing, they're out uh, at nighttime uh, putting a snowman together. Oh, I haven't done this since I was a kid. Me neither. It's fun. That's good, clean fun. I hope I can do this one day with my own children. Oh, where'd you get that? I uh, went over to the snowman shop and got it. He has like a carrot or like a uh, pipe in his hand, and a kid nearby sneaks up on him. Oh, snowball just hits him right in the back. It hits Phil right in the back. Oh, an assassin! I will protect you, your majesty. I shall die for you. You will not take her. <laughs> Find cover, my lady. <laughs> and a snowball fight erupts between him and the kids. He's like, oh, hey, nice one. Oh, I'm getting some good ones. Here, the boy. Here, the boy. Good try. Got him. Help me. Uh, he falls down uh, in front of Rita. They uh, share a tentative look in each other's eyes. They find a, it's out in a gazebo as they dance as, um, that's the other thing I was looking at, the other theme, uh, it's Ray Charles' You Don't Know Me plays in the background uh, during all of this. I think they're about to walk back to the hotel room, yeah, they're, they're still outside just walking out in the, uh, no snow anymore, but there's a lot of, like, out on the outside. I don't know if it was, like, there was a lot of snow out, maybe I was thinking of a, I don't know, either way, they're walking through, what? I'm amazed, and I'm not so easily amazed. About what? You know, about you can start a day with one kind of expectation and end up so completely different. Do you like the way this day is turning out? I like it very much. It's a perfect day. You can plan a day like this. Oh, you can. Just takes an awful lot of work. Come on in. I want to show you something. I don't think I should. I don't think you should either. That's why I'm going to show you this one thing and then kick you right out. Just one minute. They're back at the uh, the hotel room Phil's staying at. She looks over the place. He's, he's done some things here to kind of make it, I guess, look more homely or more lived in, I guess. And she's like, oh, it's just lovely. Would you like to sit and stare at the fake fire? It's really a wonderful room. It is now. And then they start um, kissing. She's like, oh, I don't know. I don't think we should do this. No, I don't neither. No, no, on second thought, I think we should. <laughs> It's the perfect end of the perfect day. That's a little fast for me, me too. Maybe I should go. Where would you go? Why? We got a perfect fire. I got some French poetry here. Baudelaire. I will read to you. I got ice cream on the window, so hold on a minute. He grabs in. He's got like a small, kind of like a Ben and Jerry's, but like a lot smaller than that. Maybe it's like a Hagen Nuss or something like that, but it's like in blue, so I just remember. <laughs> uh, Rocky Road. Oh, I love Rocky Road. I thought so. You have to stay. Oh, I'm tired. We can see each other tomorrow. No. Tonight. It's got to be tonight. Starts making out with her some more. Uh, really, just stay for a while. If you like it, stay for a while longer. And if you like that, stay for a while longer. No, let's not spoil it. I don't want to spoil it either. You know I can't stay with you. Why not? I love you. You love me. You don't even know me. I know you. And Rita's like, Oh, God. She pushes him away. Oh, I can't believe I fell for this. This whole day has just been one long setup. No, it hasn't. And I hate fudge. Yuck. No white chocolate. No fudge. What are you doing? You making some kind of list? No. Would you call my friends and ask me what I like and what I don't like? Is that what love is for you? No, no, no. This is real. This is love. Stop saying that. You must be crazy. I could never love someone like you, Kirill, because you only love with yourself. That's not true. I don't even like myself. Give me another chance. That's for making me care about you. She walks away out of the room. He takes like the small canister of Rocky Road and applies it to his face. It's a snowman scene again. And now Lily now is a little too eager, as you'll see. Oh, I haven't done this since I was a kid. Oh, me neither. It's fun. Good, clean fun. That's what's missing the world today. God, I can't wait this to do with my own children. I know, golly, I want lots of kids. I want to adopt, I want to have my own, I want foster kids. Hell, I got this at Snowman City. 
Paddle snow snowball hits him. Oh, hey! Some kid just threw a snowball at him. Ah, come here, let's have some fun. Hey, I'm gonna do this with my own kids. Hey, it's, he's not doing too well this time. He's just like, t he's trying to get to the end portion here. He's just trying to fast forward a little bit. Like I said, a little too eager. This one, and you can tell a bunch of his expression is like, oh, wow. He, he's getting, he's just getting pelted this time. He was a little more skillful last time he did this. But like, hey, hey, I already you up for adoption. Phew, there's a humdinger over here. Hey, oh, isn't that great? <laughs> Just falls over and he starts like ancing towards her now. Like he's, like I said, really ancing that works against them. And now there's like a montage of just Phil just getting slapped in the face by Rita. She's like, stop it. <laughs> Must be like five or six, seven hits. And on the last one, it uh, he opens the door for her to head back to her own hotel room. He walks out in the cold, dejected, seeing ice sculptures on the side. I uh, don't know if that's like a thing for later, but I just thought I would mention that. Anyway. Pick up your carpet. The joint is bleh, 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 bleh. Phil is destroyed, distraught. Just like he's got nothing. Like he, the, the whole world's celebrating. He's just like slowly walking up, dejected as all hell. And she's like, Phil, over here. Where have you been? You're missing all the fun. You look terrible. What happened to you? Rough night? Yeah. Back to the alarm clock. It slowly rolls over and 6 a.m. And Phil's just laying there. I guess he turned off his alarm clock or was just awake all night because the song doesn't play. He's just laying there wide awake in bed. Okay, campers. Rise and shine. And don't forget your booties because it's cold out there today. It's cold out there every day. Uh, sit, next scene is sitting in Mrs. Lancaster's, uh, I guess like a living room or like a waiting room for guests. To, they all sit around and are watching the television and Jeopardy's on. And Phil is just, uh, Alex Trebek and Phil's like getting all the questions right because of course he's done all this before. Uh, this country's largest lake, Chapala, is located near the city of Guadala Guadalajara. Why, that's two different words? I don't know. Guadalajara? Guadalajara. If they're like, what is Mexico? Then the guy, the, the, um, person on the TV says, what is Mexico? Correct. Lakes and rivers, lakes and rivers 400. Seneca is the largest of these lakes in west central New York. What are the finger lakes? Uh, Leslie, what are the finger lakes? Correct. She's like, oh, that's amazing. Lakes and rivers for 600. This South American lake drains into the smaller lake in the... What is Titicaca? What is Titicaca? Correct. Lakes and rivers for a, thou for a thousand. Um, from glacial... He doesn't even wait for the question for this one. Just looks over the side at Miss Lancaster and just says, what is the Rhone? And then just looks back. And of course, that's the correct answer. And they're just like, oh... Rhone is good for 600. You are $500 off the lead. Let's go to Inventors for... That cuts off and Phil now back at the Gobbler's Knob. Now he's just upset. He's, mm, this is pitiful. A thousand people freezing their butts off to worship a rat. What a hype. Groundhog Day used to mean something this town. They used to pull the hog out and eat it. You hypocrites. All of you. Looks over at Larry and Rita now. Oh, you got a problem with what I'm saying, Larry? Untie your tongue. You come out here and talk for a while, huh? Am I upsetting you, princess? You know, you want a prediction about the weather. You're asking the wrong, Phil. I'll give you a winter prediction. It's going to be cold. It's going to be gray. And it's going to last you for the rest of your life. And put your little hand in mine. Bam! Hits the alarm clock. It breaks. And put your little hand in mine. Bam, bam. And put your little hand in mine. There ain't no. This time picks up the alarm clock, throws it on the ground. But the song still plays, but all the sounds disordered because there's still like the audio portion or like a speaker, as I call it. So it's like. And back at Gobbler's Namba for a second time. And Phil says, once again, the eyes of this nation have turned to this tiny village in western Pennsylvania. Blah, 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 blah. There's no way that this winter 
is ever going to end. As long as this groundhog keeps seeing a shadow, I don't see any other way out. He has to be stopped. And I have to stop him. Rita and Larry are just slack-jawed at this. And Larry's like, okay, Phil, real good. Real good. He walks away and then, like, shoots over to Rita. He's out of his cord. I know it says he's crazy. I know that line. Come on. Uh, they're back at the van, Rita and Frank, uh, packing up for the day. And Rita's like, I'm worried. I think there's something really wrong with Phil. And uh, Larry's like, yeah, there's a lot of things really wrong with Phil. And Rita turns the corner of the van. Phil's there. Phil! I've come to the enemy, Rita. There's no way out now. I just want you to remember we had a beautiful day, beautiful day together once. Kisses her and then walks over to a red pickup truck where the uh, Buster and another uh, id for the festival is suiting the groundhog. I guess he's like in a cage or just like getting him ready. He's all right, little fella. Good job. <gasps> you smiled at me. Did you see that? I believe you did. All right, little fella. Here you go. The id looks over. Phil's getting closer to the car. He's like, hey, mister. Something I can do you for? It just nonchalantly walks over to the red pickup truck. Hey, what are you doing? Opens the door, closes the door, takes off. Yeah, some of the keys, I guess, were in the ignition. Oh, that was smart. And Buster sees this going. Vroom, car drives off. He's like, Jake, get the word out. Somebody kidnapped Phil. We're going after him. Uh, Jake, I guess, is the uh, a cop that sees this all this go down. And he runs into his cop car and they give chicks. And the news van is falling behind him, too, Rita and uh, Larry. And Rita says, why would somebody steal a groundhog? Larry says, oh, I can think of a couple reasons. Pervert. He must have just snapped. This ought to be good. What is he doing? What can he be thinking? And Phil's now in the car with the groundhog in his hand. The groundhog's like at the steering wheel as well. So it's like, is he seating him up front? And he's like, that's not bad for a quadruped. You know, you got to check your mirrors. Just side of your eye, side of your eye. That's it. Hey, they're chasing us. Come on, make this fun. <laughs> Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. Anyway, they uh, ultimately, I guess there's like a dead end or something like that on one end. Phil turns around, stops the car. He does like a one a stops here, and all the and the cop car gets there. The uh, the the news van gets there. And Buster heads out. Hot dog! No way he can get out except the way we came in. We got him now. Larry and Rita's like, what's he doing? I don't know. Cop pulls out his gun, and Buster's like, uh, if you gotta shoot, aim high. I don't want to hit the groundhog. Phil just revving his engine, just looking out over there. Well, we mustn't keep our public waiting. It's showtime. <laughs> Barrels right through him. All right, Larry, on me in three, two, one. Kareem's off a cliff. Car does a total one, and he hits the, hits the, the rocks below. Larry and Rita look over. She's like, Phil. Larry's like, he might be okay. Then the car goes up in flames. Larry looks over. Uh, probably not now. The car's on fire. And then cut to... What do you know? The alarm clock. And put your little hand in mine. Phil wakes up in bed. No burns on him or anything else. He's like, oh, nuts. Now we get to this portion that I should have mentioned probably at the uh, scene where he's like, uh, at the whole cold gray. It's going to last you. Because uh, now this gets to the dark portion of the film for a little bit. Anyway, he heads downstairs. After he wakes up, just goes, oh, nuts. Wakes up. Uh, sees, um, it's one of those toasters that's like you can stick like four pieces of bread in. Uh, Mrs. Lancaster's. He's like, did you see? Well, Mr. Connors, would you like some toast? Grabs the, uh, unplugs it. The toaster walks upstairs. Uh, some of you might know where this is going. Well, he's drawn a bath. He plugs the toaster in, uh, puts the toast down, sits in the tub, and then the next scene from Miss Lancaster's point of view downstairs, you just hear, and the lights all flicker and just burn out. It's like, oh, God. Uh, next scene, truck drives by. Phil, like, jumps out with, like, 
Hand open, open, close, open, close, like stop, go. Next to an, um, does a 180 off of like, I think it's like, it's, it looks like some kind of church or he's like in a tower or something like that. I don't know how he's climbed it, but apparently no one sees him do this, by the way, because people, there's like a shot of like the ground below and people just walking by all nonchalant. And he just like does like a 270 off that some bitch. Uh, next scene is, um, Rita and Larry come to I at the morgue's office come to identify a body and it sure enough Phil Connors is looking kind of pale and blue that's him Frank uh Frank yeah I did it again uh Larry oh I see Larry and Frank yeah Larry says he was a really great guy I really liked him a lot zips him back up Next scene is right at the diner just going, I'm sorry, what was that again? Phil replies, I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god, I don't think. Because you survived a car wreck? Doris comes in, y'all ready to order? I didn't just survive a wreck. I wasn't just blown up yesterday. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted, and burned. Really? Every morning I wake up fine, not a dent in the fender. I am an immortal. Doris, by the way, here in all of this, she's just like, Special today is blueberry waffles? Rita says, Why are you telling me all this? Because I want you to believe in me. You're not a god, believe me. This is 12 years of Catholic school talking. Doris like, I could come back if you're not ready. How do you know I'm not a god? Please. How do you know? Because it's not possible. I'll come back. Doris. He gets up, uh, introduces Rita Doris. Uh, this is Doris. Her brother-in-law, Carl, owns this diner. She's worked here since she was... Well, I don't actually have that number. Since he was 12, I guess. Since he was uh, 12? Child labor laws. She always been working here since he was 18. She wants to see Paris. Oh, more than anything in the world, she wants to see Paris before she dies. Oh, boy, would I. What are you doing? This is Debbie Kleiser and her fiancé, Fred. Do I know you? They're supposed to be married this afternoon, but Debbie's reconsidering. What? Lovely ring. That's what Rita says. Uh, pulls her back. Uh, this is Bill, who's been a waiter for three years since he left Penn State and had to get work. He likes the town, paints toy soldiers, and he's gay. I am. <laughs> uh, this is Gus. He hates his life here. Wishes he'd stay in the Navy. I could have retired on half pay after... Uh... Do I have that done? Where is that at? Half pay after 20 years. Okay, I did write that down. Is this some kind of trick? Maybe the real god uses tricks. Maybe he's not omnipotent. He's just been around so long he knows everything. Oh, really? Well, who's that? This is Tom. He's worked in the coal mine until they closed it down. And her? Alice. She came from Ireland as a babe and lived in Erie most of her life. He's right. Her? Nancy. She works in the dress shop and makes chipmunk noises when she gets real excited. Hey! It's true. How do you know these people? I know everything. In five seconds, a waiter's going to drop a tray of dishes. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. No, that's enough. What about me, Phil? You know me too? I know all about you. You like producing, but you're hoping for more than Channel 9 Pittsburgh. Well, everybody knows that. You like boats, but not the ocean. You go to a mountain lake in the summer with your family. There's a long wooden dock and a boathouse with boards missing from the roof. And a place you used to crawl underneath to be alone. You're a sucker for French poetry and rhinestones. You're very generous. You're kind to strangers and children. And when you stand in the snow, you look like an angel. How are you doing this? I told you. I wake up every day right here in Punxsutawney. And it's always February 2nd. And there's nothing I can do about it. If you still doubt me. He takes out a pen and paper. Uh, in 10 seconds, write something down. Larry is going to come through that door and take you away from me. But you can't let him. Please believe me. You got to believe me. Larry walks in. You guys ready? We better get going if we're gonna stay ahead of the weather. What's that? He looks over at the note. Rita's reading it, and sure enough, whatever he says, word for word. If we're gonna stay ahead of the weather. So she believes, and now they're outside, walking out out of the diner. Maybe it is really happening. How else could you know so much? Well, there is no way. I'm not that smart. Maybe I should spend the day with you as an objective witness, just to see what happens. 
This sounds like a science project. Next scene, there's the... They're in the, the Phil's hotel room he's staying at. There's a top hat, and they're like just whipping cards into the thing, trying to get into the top hat. Concentrate. Uh, Phil tells Rita, concentrate. You gotta want it. It's more in the wrist than the fingers. You just gotta... And she keeps missing. Come on, be the hat. Come on, go. No, it would take me a year to get good at this. No, no, six months, four to five hours a day, you'd be an expert. Is this what you do with eternity? So now you know. That's not the worst part. What's the worst part? The worst part is tomorrow you'll have forgotten all about this. And you treat me like a jerk again. No, it's all right. I am a jerk. But you're not. It doesn't matter. I've killed myself so many times. I don't even exist anymore. Well, sometimes I wish I had a thousand lifetimes. I don't know, Phil. Maybe it's not a curse. Just depends on how you look at it. <laughs> Gosh, you're an upbeat lady. <laughs> they hug and... It's, uh, it's been a really nice day for me. Me too. Well, maybe if it's not too boring, we could do it again tomorrow. Uh, do it again sometime. I hope so. Wait, they embrace for a while. She holds on to him, still holding on him. She's like, opens her eyes, she looks around, she's like, you're still here. I know. I thought you were supposed to disappear. I was or something. Not until six. Oh, you rat. <laughs> Hits him in the face with a pillow nearby. Oh, I never said midnight. You knew I was waiting for midnight. Does this mean you're going to leave? No. Good. Next scene, they're, uh... In the, sharing the same bed together, they're asleep. They're nothing like a, just just sharing the same bed. Nothing like a. I think he wakes her up at some point. Just like, oh, I'm sorry. It's a, oh no, she's apologizing maybe she fell asleep. And he had a he has a book in his hand. So I guess he was like reading to her at the time for something. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. You can fall asleep. I promise I won't touch you, much. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not tired. What were you saying? I think the last thing you heard was only God can make a tree. Really? He sits there for a while, kind of collects his thoughts. Try to come up with perfect, a perfect thing with what he exactly wants to tell her. Like takes a lot of deliberation. Uh, she's. I think he still has the book in his hand or he like, puts it on the nightstand or something like that. And he's just facing her. She, her eyes are closed. She's about to drift off. Tells her what I wanted to say was I think you're the kindest, sweetest, prettiest person I've ever met in my life. I've never seen anyone that's nicer to people than you are. The first time I saw you, something happened to me. I never told you, but I knew that I wanted to hold you as hard as I could. I don't deserve someone like you. But if I ever could, I swear I would love you for the rest of my life. Did you say something? Good night. Next scene, he's at the, uh, the, uh, Gobbler's Knob. Except this time, he's got, a uh, a coffee... You know, that little brown tray that holds, like, big coffee cups in there. And he's got, like, a bag of, uh, I guess, like, pastries or donuts. Why is this pastries? Anyway, who wants coffee? Get it while it's hot. He meets Rita and uh, Larry there. Thanks, Phil. Larry, skim milk, two sugars. Well, thanks, Phil. Pastry? Yeah, thanks. We're setting up. Take your pick, Larry. Pastry? Thanks. Raspberry. Great. I was just talking with Buster Grin, the head groundhog honcho, and he said if we set up over here, we might get a better shot. What do you think? Sounds good. Larry, what do you think? Yeah, let's go for it. Good work, Phil. Maybe we'll get lucky. He's about to head out with all the equipment. He's like, no, 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 let me help you with your heavy stuff. You got your coffee. I'll get this. Larry, we never talk. You have kids? Uh, Next soon, he's... Uh, Oh, I forgot. Uh, that's right. He meets the old bum during that. That's what I had written down. He meets the old bum 
gives him some bills he's uh, rifling through and then just hands him the whole wad. Then the coffee thing happens. That's right. Forgot about that. Anyway. Uh, next thing afterwards, Phil's sitting in a diner. He hears a piano song over the radio and light bulb goes off again. Uh, finds a piano teacher. Knock, knock, knock. She opens the door. Hi, I'd like a piano lesson, please. Oh, I'm with a student now. If you come back tomorrow, I can squeeze you in. I kind of want to get started right away. I could give you a thousand dollars. Come on. She looks over like, oh, it's like a lot of money. Anyway, I think it's like a can't be any uh, older than I'd say maybe like thirteen to fifteen year old girl just shoves her out the door, and then he gets started on his uh, piano lessons. That's what I was worried. That's what the thing was. Anyway, uh, next scene, he wakes up in the morning, uh, runs into the heavy set guy, like the, the, off to see the groundhog. Morning! Off to see the groundhog. Buongiorno, signore. Wow. You think it'll be an early spring? Winter, slumbering in the open air, wears upon his smiling face a dream of spring. Ciao. Ciao. Big smile on his face. His day has been made. Now Phil has a mini chance on his hand for this next scene, uh, working on ice sculpture. So he's, he's playing his craft, I guess, learning all, all sorts of things for this portion. Uh, and uh, Rita and Larry notice this. Oh, Phil! How she look? Great! Thank you! Did you know he can ice sculpt? No. Alright, back to the... Um, Back to the piano. Well, he's, he's done this a uh, couple montages here back and forth, but now he's playing uh, fairly well. And the piano teacher's like, oh, not bad. You say this is your first lesson? Well, my father was a piano mover. So, yeah, it's not for a while. Okay, just going over what I wrote down so I don't forget, like, next scenes because I get, like, the end of the movie. Still a little fuzzy. Uh, most parts of the scenes are a little fuzzy. If I do this, like, by myself, like, from memory, I'll, like, skip, I'll, like, skip things or, like, put one part in front of the other in a way. I get real dyslexic with this movie. <laughs> in some cases. Uh, anyway, uh, he runs into Ned. <gasps> hey, Phil? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Ned! Embrace. I have missed you so much. And then he gets weird with the, uh, he lingers with the embrace. Like, he starts, like, 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 clutching at him. Like, I don't know where you're headed. But can you call in sick? And Ned's just like, <laughs> I gotta get going. He just runs off. Next scene is at night. He sees the old bum out in the, uh, it's like, it's like pitch black out very night. Uh, Hello, father. Let's get you someplace warm. And he takes hold of him. Got remember me? Yeah. Uh, next scene's at a hospital. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are you the one who brought the old man in? A nurse comes up to him. He's like, uh, yeah. How is he? He just passed away. What did he die of? He was just old. It was his time. And Phil just, uh, hits the back room. Just takes off and hits the back room. I want to see his chart. Excuse me. Sir, you can't come in here. This is a restricted area. Opens the, uh... Opens where he, I guess, where he was, like, staying or the the bed he was in. Opens up, I guess, well, they don't show anything. Or he's either, like, moved or if they just, like, covered him up and ready to to take him out of the room and, like, put him in a place for, like, morgue or something like that, I guess. I don't know what they do with the, I guess that's what they would do. Where's the chart? Sometimes people just die. Not today. At the diner with two bowls of soup, um, it's filling the bum for the next scene. Oh, by the way. Uh, bum's working his over. It's almost empty, and Phil just shoves him, just uh, pushes his bowl over to the bum. He's like, and it gets lonely at the bottom. It's hard down there at the bottom. Both of them get, like, sandwiches as well, like big old delis. He's like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Next scene, he's outside, lying on the floor, and Phil's trying to resuscitate him. CPR and everything, he's like, Come on, Dad. Come on, Pop. Come on. Come on. Come on. Breathe, Pop. Breathe. Breathe. And no use. And the next scene is, uh, so yeah. 
kind of a sad scene. Next scene, he's at Gobbler's Knob, and uh, he has the entire populace hanging on his every word. And he says, When Chekhov saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. But standing here among the people of Punxsutawney and basking in the warmth of their hearths and hearts, I couldn't imagine a better fate than a long and lustrous winter. From Punxsutawney, it's Phil Connors. So long. Applause, everybody. They're a very nice speech. Well, thank you. Thanks. How is that for you two? And uh, Larry's like, man, you touched me. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta go. Rita looks at my girl. Oh, that was surprising. I didn't know you were so versatile. I surprise myself sometimes. You want to get some coffee? I'd love to. Can I get a ring check? I got some errands to run. And he runs off. Rita looks at my girl. He's like, errands? Well, what errands? I thought we were going back. Walks off with a little bit of a little bit of a hurry. And I guess he looks ahead. He starts, and now he starts bolting. He's like, oh, hold on, old fella. And it's a, he sees a kid up in a, up in a tree. And he like, Jake falls down. He uh, loses his footing. He just falls back and feels like right there to catch him in the nick of time. He's like, ooh, what do you say? What do you say? He catches them, puts him down. Kid runs off. What do you say? Oh, you little brat. You have never thanked me. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. Ooh. Uh, thrilled women in a car is this next scene. Uh, they get a flat tire. It's like, oh, now what? You've totaled it. It's only a flat tire. Just be patient. Just cool it. And so all of a sudden, this car starts moving up and down. Oh, it's an earthquake. No, it's not an earthquake. Oh, what is it? They look behind. It's filled like with a jack. Just, <laughs> just as fast and hard as he possibly can to get them on their way. And they look behind. Oh, thank you, young man. Phil goes, oh, it's nothing. I just had the tire. I had the jack. Just be careful. Be a minute. And get back to work. He goes, who's that? Must be from the motor club. Uh, next scene's at a diner, and it's um, Buster's choking on some food. And uh, I guess his wife, or his, like he's sitting with his family. He's like, oh, my God, he's having a heart attack. What do I do? Call an ambulance, a lawyer, a doctor. Mom, I don't think he's breathing. And Phil gets behind him, performs the Heimlich. Puh! Out the food goes. Oh, I think that did it. Sets him down. Everyone applauds. He's filled with like, hey, if you're going to eat steak, get some sharper tooth. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Are you who was that? I'm fine. Are you sure? Oh, yes, dude. Uh, next scene is at the uh, bar. Uh, Larry's talking with uh, Nancy. And they're trying to, he's trying to hit it off with her. Uh, Larry's like, people just don't understand what is involved in this. This is an art form. You know, I think most people just think that I hold the camera and point that stuff. There is a lot more to it than just that. Uh, would you be at all interested in seeing the inside of the van? You know, I really have to get back to the party. Oh, great idea. I'll go with you. Let me just drop a tip here. And I think he leaves like $2 for the uh, the barman. And like, once he's not looking, just grabs that grabs that two back. Eesh, really skeevy. They run into Rita. How are you? Uh, Rita, this is Nancy. We were just going to the party. You going? Sounds like fun. Maybe we should call Phil. And Nancy's like, oh, I think he's already in there. Oh, great. And downstairs, he's playing up a storm. He's mastered the piano now. He's in there with, like, a bunch of jazz musicians around him. And uh, once again, life of the party. It is uh, his... Uh, Rita looks him over, and she stands next to his um, his music teacher, his piano teacher. And she's like, oh, isn't he good? And Rita's like, oh, he's great. He's my student. I'm so proud of you. He come, that's what he says. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, like I said, the end of the movie's still a little fuzzy. Anyway, he's done with, like, his, uh, he's about to hand it off to the piano teacher to play piano on her, uh, by herself now. Like, she takes over for him, and he steps off, about to replace him, and she's like, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Phil's like, welcome to our party. We're just like, I didn't know you could play like that. Phil's like, no, I'm versatile. Uh, they, a slow dance starts, and both of them start slow dancing together. And everybody Phil's met so far. The two old ladies from the um, the car meet him. I said, oh, it's that nice young man from the motor club. Thank you again. Oh, it's nothing, ladies. Well, he's the fastest jack in Jefferson County. You hang on to him. He's a... Oh, maybe they don't. Maybe it's someone else I'm thinking of. That's it. Again, sometimes the script differs a little tiny bit from what I remember. 
Rita's like, what was that all about? And Phil's like, I have no idea. They've been hitting on me all night. There you are. It's Buster and his wife. I never thanked you properly for what you did for Buster. You would have choked for sure. He may have. He was trying to swallow a whole cow. <laughs> I owe you one, buddy. That's, oh, here you go. Hang on to him, dear. He's a real find. What did you do today, Rita says. Uh, Frank, uh. I'm saying Frank again. I, I keep saying Frank. Um, uh, Phil. It's like, eh, same old, same old. Uh, Fred and his fiance. I can't remember their name. For the life of me. I know I said it earlier, but. Excuse me, uh, Fred, how, oh, Fred, how was the wedding? I just wanted to thank you for making Debbie go through with it. That's right, Debbie. Hey, all I did was fan the flame of her passion for you. You are the best. Rita, this is Debbie and Fred Kleiser. Ego kids, congratulations. Hands him a present. What is this? No way. WrestleMania! Oh, how'd you know we were going to be in Pittsburgh anyway? Oh, thanks, you're a real pal. Yeah, this is the best. Like, I think, uh, like, Debbie reaches in, kisses uh phil and he responds by kiss um fred responds by kissing rita and both of them are just like she grabs fred and angrily and walks storms off Oof. i don't understand rita tells phil i was like i guess not how does everyone know you you only come here once a year and you seem like the most popular person in town excuse me dr connors this old this old couple who we haven't seen before but uh uh, they mentioned, uh, excuse me, Dr. Connors, I want to thank you for fixing Felix's back. He can help around the house again. <sighs> I'm sorry to hear that, Felix. <laughs> and then they leave. Uh, Rita's like, Dr. Connors? Feels like, eh, it's kind of an honorary title. Rita says, what is going on with you? And feels like, I really don't know. There is something going on with you. Would you like the long version or the short one? Let's start with the short and go from there. Uh, slow dance music ends. Uh, Buster is on stage now with a gavel in hand. Okay, folks, attention. Time for the big bachelor auction. You all know the rules. All the eligible bachelors come down in front, and you ladies bid on them. You have to do whatever you want with them. No questions asked. I don't want to know about it as long as it's legal. So get out of your pocketbooks, and remember, it's all for charity. And, uh, Doris notices Phil. Phil, what are you doing down there? Go on, get up there. I got ten bucks that says you're mine. Hey, Buster, I got your first victim. Phil Connors, come on up here. All right, what am I bid for this fine specimen? Uh, bidding war starts between Nancy and Doris. I think uh, I think it's uh, Doris that starts off. Doris and Nancy. Five dollars. The bidding has begun at five dollars. Ten dollars. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Fifty-five. 60! I've I'm bid 60. Do I hear more? Uh, back and forth. Uh, and Rita notices this this whole time. She holds up her entire pocketbook and just loudly proclaims, $399.88! Whoa! Uh, we can't accept any more bids. I believe that's sold to the little lady for $339.88. Congratulations! Extends her hand, Phil takes it, and they walk off. And Buster says, all right, uh, who's next? Okay, bachelors, who's next? Um, and uh, Larry's thinking about it, looking over Nancy, runs up there. <laughs> you get like the slow, sexy, like, drum solo, like, tss, dun, tss, tss. but he's still in the sweater vest, he wore it, that's <laughs> nobody's in, ta nobody's taking interest on this guy, and he's like, and even Buster's like, all right, what am I bid for this guy? Do I get a buck and a half? Anybody? 75 cents. And one of the old women out there is like, well, I bid two bits. And he's like, sold the lady for 25 cents. I got him. <laughs> he looks out, uh, who he sees who bid on him. He's like, oh, hell. Rita and Phil are out, almost out the door until they, until they run into um, Ned Ryerson. Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Oh, hey, Rita, this is Ned Ryerson, my new insurance agent. I'll say, I have not seen this guy for 20 years. He comes up to me and buys whole life term, uniflex, fire, theft, auto, dental health with the optional death and dismemberment plan, water damage. This is the best day of my life. Mine too. Mine too. Where are we going? And she looks at him like, oh, let's not spoil it. <laughs> oh, let's not. Oh, I got that. Ow. 
I don't know what he's on, but I'll... <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to do that again. <laughs> um, Phil and Rhea are outside. He's working on a, an ice sculpture. She's got her eyes closed. Phil's work, uh, doing some work, just some the finishing touches. She's like, why can't I look? And Phil's like, because you bother me a lot. I'm getting cold. How much longer I got to sit here? I'm just giving you your money's worth. You pay the top dollar for me. I think you were a bargain. That's sweet of you to say. Probably right. Is it finished yet? Almost. I still gotta put cherry syrup on top and then we can eat it. Come on, I'm freezing. All right, one second. All right. Let me uh, turn it to the light. And it's a, it's a sculpture of uh, Rita in ice. She's like, it's amazing. It's beautiful. How'd you do that? I know your face so well, I could have done it with my eyes closed. It's lovely. I don't know what to say. I do. No matter what happens tomorrow or for the rest of my life, I'm happy now because I love you. I think I'm happy too. And they go home, back to the hotel room. They say love won't pay the rent. Sons and something, money's all been spent. Oh, please, not again. What? That is a great song. It is not. Don't listen to this, man. It's too early. Phil looks out, um, decidedly more bright in his hotel room. Something's different. Looks over and sees Rita still in the same bed with him. He's like, oh, something's different. Rita looks over. Is that good or bad? Anything different is good. But this could be really good. He just looks around, looks her over. Why are you here? I bought you. I own you. But why are you still here? You said stay, so I stayed. I said stay, so you stayed. I can't even make a collie stay. I, I gotta check something, okay? Stay. He gets up, looks out the window. Everything's different. There's no cars. And I think uh, some of the snow is shovel, but there's still a lot out there. Again, this movie, 93, might not have the whole thing that we're a little bit more... Uh, preparation for 2018 now now everything like paved and all that all the salt and everything but he, again he looks out there's no cars or not that many people he's like oh, they're gone they're all gone he goes back to the bed with jumps back in the bed with Rita excited and he's like do you know what today is what T today is tomorrow it happened you're here I'm here and he's just so ecstatic he starts he starts kissing her. He's like, oh, gosh, why weren't you like this last night? You just fell asleep. It was the end of a very long day. Is there anything I can do for you today? Oh, I'm sure I can think of something. Anyway, I guess they stay for a couple hours. It's like later on in the day, they step outside. And uh, Out of the hotel, there's like the white picket fence. There's like snow everywhere. There's... Looks outside. She's like, it's so beautiful. Phil says, let's live here. As Nat King Cole, almost like being in love, plays in the background. They start, they uh, they kiss again. And Phil looks over and says, like, we'll rent to start. <laughs> Maybe he's not sure we're out of it just yet, but he's just so excited. And uh, that's again, Nat King Cole plays. And that's the movie. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Is uh, again glad I wrote some of this stuff down. I might have been a little out of place because again this place doesn't do uh, numbers for some reason. I don't know. Why I, I have no idea why I kept saying Frank over and over again. I, I think I got scooged uh, somewhere on my mind. I watched that like a couple of days before too. <laughs> also a great uh, Bill Murray movie. Recommend. I think I said Stripes too with uh, John Candy's in that movie. What else was Bill Murray in that I seen that I thought was kind of okay? I think Meatballs. That's what it's called, yeah. Summer Camp. Uh, I haven't seen any of his later stuff. I don't know what about Bob. I don't know... Uh, what's that movie with What's-Her-Face that he was in? Uh, where he's on about the Suntory. I can't remember the name of the movie. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe it's Suntory time. I guess he's like a big liquor. Maybe he's, well, again. 
Because I noticed that movie, Jim Beam, Ice Water, uh, I think Scrooge Yord is a highball or something along those lines, which I don't even know if that kind of drink exists. I don't know. I'm not an expert. <laughs> but yeah, that is Groundhog Day. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yours. Hopefully you guys are staying warm. I know over here we had like a... Well, yesterday it's uh, snowed. Uh, today it's actually going to warm up, and I guess everything's just going to melt out now, so... <laughs> The sun again, off again. And now it's gonna and now it's in the fifties, and it's gonna stay that way for a while until I guess the other another crazy snowstorm blows in. It's probably gonna sit on March. Who knows? I mean, seeing if they did see the shadow or not, but nah. I know they do the groundhog thing for real, but uh, yeah. Try to keep this thing under two hours, so uh, before I start rambling as usual, so I will say take care, and thanks for listening. One more time. All right. What was the other thing I wanted to do? I don't remember. It's just like, hey, we're talking, idiot. Lovely stuff. All right. Bye. Take care. Thanks for listening.